My name's Stuart, this is the Royal Ramble, and we are a dirt sheet show that you would assume Vince McMahon would like because we never break exclusive news and we rarely deliver spoilers. In fact, what's the point of this show? Anyway, WWE delivered some great TV shows this week, and as for the tag team title match on Raw, well done sirs, well done. There are some minor issues with it, which I'll get to, but The New Day, of course, were brilliant, and AJ Styles was... You know, I can't, I can't think of a, a word for him. He was just really good. And the obvious Jericho heel turn came. Now, the problem is, there was no problem with the match, it was great. The problem is with the story, because I think this actually arrived a little bit too early. They could have held it off until Roadblock, and they could have even got another match out of these two teams, which I would have paid to see. And then they could have built towards the Jericho Styles Four, fifth, sixth, seventh match in the series at WrestleMania. But anyway, they chose to do it this way. But I also had a hard time believing in some of the crowd's reactions because there were plenty of this and even more of this. But to be fair, they did do it quite well. And the match, as I said, was incredible. But I would have been even more pissed off with the Jericho heel turn if WWE had given me a little bit longer, more opportunity to buy one of their Y2AJ t shirts, which I would have. And then they split up. Now, as to why WWE thought it was necessary to hype Jericho's explanation as to why he did what he did to AJ Styles on the coming SmackDown episode, it's a bit strange, especially as we can infer from his post-match interview on Raw as to why he did it, so I don't know what the reasoning was there. Uh, not as mind-boggling though as to why the Ascension came out to beat up AJ Styles when he was going to confront Jericho. Weird. Anyway, um, if you weren't already watching Total Divas, you're unlikely to start, um, especially after the promo on Raw this past week was Brie buys a scooter. Oh my god! Moving on, we're seeing the gradual coming out party of Sami Zayn, who, by the way, should definitely not stand next to Neville with his t-shirt off. But in reference to Zayn and Neville, I believe that Zayn is more likely to get over with the fan base in the immediate future, as opposed to Neville, even though he's an established star, really, on uh, Raw and SmackDown simply because of Zayn's music. Now, Neville is a great wrestler. He's incredible, he's amazing. Everything he does from week to week gets better and better, as we saw this past week. But we're unlikely to ever hear a pop from the audience when there's a match going on and we're suddenly interrupted by... Are we? Whereas Sami Zayn's music is almost designed to bring about an audience pop. Uh, either way, we're in for some great matches involving these two men and hopefully we can add Kevin Owens into that mix. It's a perfect recipe for some brilliant TV. And finally, we have the steaming pile of bollocks that is the Lana Brie feud. Lana, who's wearing her Dolph Ziggler denim again, good job WWE wardrobe, has actually been inserted into a program with Brie Bella, which may or may not ultimately culminate with a match at WrestleMania. Oh God, no! Some might think that Lana isn't quite ready for a match yet, but with moves like this, I think you'll find that those people are actually right. This shouldn't be on TV. This should be nowhere near our TV screens. I can't think of a reason as to why someone came up with this idea. I simply can't. Unless that someone was Jerry Lawler, in which case, fair enough. Anyway, anyway, that's all we've got time for on the Royal Ramble. Follow me right here, leave some comments on the video, talk to me on Twitter, I'll reply, and be sure to join me same time next week right here on WrestleZone.com. <laughs>